Meditation Meditation is absolutely essential for both self-healing and spirit growth. The modern society offers us many artificial goals, money, fame, career, possessions, and sensual pleasures. You are supposed to look a certain way, behave a certain way, be interested in certain things and enjoy certain things. Yet you have already awakened to realize the vanity of these attractions. From the spiritual perspective, the main value of life is the opportunity for spiritual growth. It is growing the purity, power, and integrity of the spirit that matters. All material goals are temporary and illusionary. They can be nice tools and prompts for the spiritual growth, but their value is temporary. As you get experience and mature, you discover that the main answers are not to be sought outside of your consciousness, but inside. You discover that your inner life is of primary importance. Modern people are trapped in their daily routine and external pleasures. They look for external approval of other people, are so busy working and having fun after work that they forget about their inner life. But sometimes, maybe after a big shake-up, people awaken to the realization that inner life is underdeveloped. It is very important to pay attention in your inner life, and meditation is one of the best ways to face your own consciousness and engage in your inner life. In meditation, you disconnect from the outer world and focus inside. For some people, it is difficult to look into their own soul because they find much of hidden fear, anger, grief, and pain. Processing and resolving these negative energies is one of the goals of meditation. Another goal is to connect to your spirit, and through your spirit, to connect to God directly. In essence, meditation is a phone line to God. During meditation, you upload to the creation all your problems and download the answers. Keep in mind that your physical health and the health of your soul are tightly linked. The physical illnesses which result from psychological trauma are called psychosomatic. In chronic illnesses, the psychological trauma, pain, and inflammation often go together. It is the cause of frailties, allergies, heart problems, and many neurological digestive and skin problems. The biological system responsible for inflammation is called the immune system. One of its functions is to hunt infections. Another function is to keep the seeds of cancer under control and to constantly eliminate any cells that convert to the cancerous state. When the immune system becomes too weak, it allows cancer and infections. When immune system becomes overly active and non-discriminate, it causes chronic inflammation such as arthritis, psoriasis, allergies, chronic pains, sickness, behavior, and depression. Many brain disorders such as Alzheimer's and other neurodegenerative disorders are caused by inflammation. In almost all chronic pain diseases, there is a combination of pain, which results from overexcitation of nerves and inflammation. This is a self-activated and self-reinforced cycle, where overly active neurons activates the inflammation response, and the inflammatory response in turn closes the cycle by overly activating nerves. So inflammation and nerves activate each other, creating a self-enforcing circuit. Even mainstream science recognizes the connection between psychological trauma, the activation of neuroinflammation. Mainstream science recognizes that stress contributes to arthritis, allergies, psoriasis, and cancer. Stress is a psychological disbalance and is the disbalance of the soul. Psyche is the soul in Greek, and psychology is the knowledge about the soul. What is not understood by mainstream science is the spiritual energy. The traumas of the soul could lead to disease, not only chemically, but also through spiritual energy mechanisms. The traumas of the soul produce negative selfish programs which feed on the energies of the body. This negative energy blocks the flow and amplifies itself. These negative excesses of energy are connected to cells through the cellular and magnetic vibrations, largely through the vibrations of DNA. These negative energies reprogram the genome in the cells to behave selfishly and without harmony with the rest of the body. These selfish cells can induce cancer, inflammation, and pain. 
Energy healing and meditation are among the best tools which help with removing these negative energies, blockages, and vortexes. One of the main goals of meditation is reconnecting the mind and the soul. It is inner work which integrates different parts of the mind together and to the subconscious. In meditation, the traumatic experience is uploaded to the spirit and becomes part of the accumulated collective knowledge. In return, healing is sent down from the spirit to the body. It is similar to healing that takes place during sleep, but in meditation, it can be more profound and guided by your intention. Meditation is very efficient in reducing stress, pain, and inflammation, and is statistically confirmed by the mainstream science. The nature of modern human life is very unnatural, pun intended. The stress of modern life is very artificial. The majority of living beings in nature are not stressed out. Look at the cats and dogs. They are constant reminders that life is possible without stress. Yet modern civilization has developed many ways to stress out a human. For many, being constantly stressed out becomes a habit. People become workaholics and continuously are worrying. Even when these worries have free time and could take time to rest, they still find ways to become stressed out. Many watch stressful movies, read stressful news, and continue to be immersed in the stressful information flow. Yet a meditative state is very natural. It brings you back to the natural balance. Many traditional human occupations are balanced and non-stressful. Gardening, cooking, and washing dishes are among those occupations which bring you back to the balance if you allow yourself to relax. These kinds of work are among the easiest ways to do a meditation practice. Of course, there are many ways to meditate. They might look different, but the purpose and results are very similar. All these ways bring you back to balance. They bring you back to yourself and reconnect you with the spirit. Here, I will describe a very basic meditation available to anyone. First, you need to find a time to meditate. Some people have plenty of free time and some people have no time left for meditation. Those who have no time are usually the ones who are stressed out the most. In this case, the shortest meditation could be only 15 minutes a day. But the most optimal for busy life would be three times a day, 40 minutes each. The times for meditation can be subtracted from your sleeping time. This way, you would still have time to work, but you will become healthier, more balanced, and less stressed. If you are working usual working hours, you can fit one meditation period during lunch, one after you come from work, and one when you go to sleep. There are many people who meditate much longer. It's not usual to meditate 10 to 15 hours a day. Next, it is important to find a quiet, protected place for meditation. In an ideal situation, you would go to your room, put a sign on your door, don't disturb, and lay on your bed. Many people use their car for meditation during their lunch break. Meditation in nature is wonderful. If you are a beginner, it's important to avoid distractions. But as you become used to meditation, the distractions won't bother you anymore. You would be either able to stay in meditation by ignoring the distractions or pause the meditation, deal with urgent problems, and come back to meditation again. Find a position for meditation which is best for you and can produce the best results. Lying down has advantages because you can completely and easily get disconnected without being worried about your body. It is better to lie straight on your back in the most comfortable position with a pillow and blanket, if needed, so you can have as few distractions as possible. The straight symmetrical position has the advantage that your body becomes a better antenna and is more symmetrical and resonating, so it connects to the spirit in a better way. However, lying on your stomach or side is also acceptable, whatever is easier for you. Some people don't like to meditate in the horizontal position because they easily fall asleep. But merging your meditation with the nap is a rather good idea. In sleep, you also upload experiences to the spirit and download health, harmony, coherence, and orderliness from the spirit. The difference between sleep and meditation is that in meditation, you use your intention to connect to the spirit. You guide yourself in the position, and you bring back the specific results. 
meditation often is sleep with intention. Many people practice meditation by sitting in lotus position or in a chair. The advantage is that your spine is straight and vertical, and this way your body is balanced and connected to earth energies in a different way. Meditation in a sitting position prevents you from falling asleep. Sitting position is classical for meditation. Traditionally, in Hinduism and Buddhism, people meditate in lotus position. The position you choose for meditation is important because the bone structure creates a resonating antenna to uphold a spiritual vibration. Meditation while standing or walking, doing repetitive work, is also a good idea. Although it doesn't allow you as deep penetration to the spirit and to disconnect from the body completely, but the repetitive motion has its own virtues and benefits. It creates a wave which is used to connect to the spirit. Among best moving meditations are meditations in the shower and while washing dishes. It is helpful to find a quiet place to meditate. Some people are very sensitive to sound, and some people can disconnect very easily. As you become more balanced and more guided by the spirit, you will find yourself more protected in this way and you won't have to be on guard all the time. It can be easier to disconnect from the body when you know you're safe. There are few tools that help blocking incoming information. Some meditators find helpful using earmuffs. Earmuffs specially designed for woodworkers have best sound protection ratings. Avoid electronic active noise blocking headphones since they bombard you with ultrasound and electromagnetic waves. On the other hand, using meditation music is a good idea. Very often, the music will prevent you from falling asleep while helping to create harmonic vibration and disconnect the noises and distractions. A sleeping mask for your eyes would also help you with the meditation. Many guided meditations are available on YouTube. A guided meditation is good for beginners. It hypnotizes you into a meditative mood. As you select a meditation on YouTube, preview different ones and see which one resonates with you and gives you a feeling of trust and protection. As you practice more and more, you might find that meditation in silence allows you to get into a meditative state faster and be more connected to your own experience and your own soul. It is very healthy to meditate in a place with good energies and fresh air. As you become sensitive to energies, you can feel which energies are best for you. Such places could be on the top of a hill or seashore on a river or a place near a little creek, any place with the natural water. A forest is a great place. Artificial places like churches, domes, and houses with pyramidal roofs are great. Yet some other places are pretty negative. When places are charged with negative energy and connected to past or present suffering, you would need to put a special effort to adjust this negative energy. One way is to separate yourself from it. Another is to transform it into a positive energy. Remember that you are a healer and take on yourself a mission to heal the past and present trauma using your meditation. Intend to make the energies positive and work on that in your meditation. You begin the meditation by finding a comfortable position and adjusting your pillow, blanket, and earmuffs. Relax the palms and put them on your stomach and in the most, in the most comfortable position. You can put your relaxed right palm on the solar plexus and the left palm just above your navel. Adjust your position to feel more comfortable. Focus on your breathing and intend to breathe slower and deeper than usual. Use your belly to breathe. Choose an intention for today's meditation. A typical intention would be to upload your problems to the spirit and get back to the healing and the answers. If you have any questions for spirit, Pronounce them for yourself. Pronounce them for yourself and expect them to have at least some resolution by the end of the meditation. The resolution doesn't have to come in words. It could just be a better understanding, a better acceptance of the situation. It is a good idea to say a short prayer. In each meditation, you might address a specific aspect of God or Spirit. You can address your prayer to the One God, the Creator, Divine Mother, the Universe, the Source, Yeshua, Jesus, the Archangels or a specific angel or archangel, a specific friendly alien, 
a specific ancestor of yours, or to a spirit of your favorite celebrity. On a different day, you may be attracted to a different aspect of God, so do it as you feel better. Keep in mind that from a certain perspective, they all become one. They are all united in the Spirit, and they all are aspects of God, and you are as well. A typical prayer starts with gratitude, continues with invitation of help, and ends with gratitude. Here's an example of a typical short prayer. Thank you, the universe, for this experience. I invite your healing energy. I thank you for sending me the healing. Time, from the spiritual perspective, is much more fluid. It is therefore okay to give thanks for the healing which may come later in your time. Gratitude is also one of the best remedies for stress. Gratitude not only heals trauma, it also helps you in your life path in mysterious ways. Once you've found the time and space for meditation, and once you're comfortable and have silences, visual and audible distractions, and once you have begun your conscious breathing, are you actually meditating? How do you know you're doing the right thing? What do you actually do during meditation? All that has been said until now was physical. These are easy steps to accomplish. But the next step is not physical. It is spiritual. You can program a robot to lie down, close eyes, and to breathe deeply. But only a spiritual being like you can meditate. So, what is the secret? The secret is to make a trans-dimensional jump. Until now, all actions are physical and can be actually described in words. But as soon as you do such a trans-dimensional jump, what you will feel and see there often cannot be described with words and cannot be perceived with physical mind. You will need to shift from the physicality and from physical sensations to the area where you don't feel, don't think, or where your consciousness exists beyond physicality. So we are asking for a miracle, and this miracle is actually accessible to anyone. Some people disconnect from the physical world with ease. For others, it is a skill which can be developed. What makes this much easier is that you are not alone in this journey. You are being helped by the spirit guides from the other side. A desire to meditate, a desire to shift to higher reality is sufficient. If you get in a quiet place and quiet your mind, you will be helped to shift. Another understanding that helps to meditate is to understand that meditation is essentially a form of a sleep. It is a sleep with intention. The Dalai Lama said sleep is the best meditation. What makes meditation much easier is that you go to the other side every night when you sleep anyway. All you need to do now is to go to another side with intention to connect to spirit, to upload your worries, to download your health, and to assist your spirit growth. Brain images studies and brain wave measurements show that in meditation, you reach the same frequency of brain waves as you do when sleeping and dreaming. Only because you do it with intention and consciously, you can achieve a higher harmony, higher coherence, and a better connection to the spirit. When people meditate, they usually go to a higher vibration, a happier place, a better balance and state of self-healing. Yet there are few people who drift to darkness. There are some people that are so stressed out and are so prone to depression that when they meditate, they habitually go into sadness and connect to lower vibrations. Meditations for them can be a sour trip. If you meet this kind of experience, look for help from someone who can guide you to a higher vibration. It can be a guidance in a person or through a YouTube video. A great help in such situation is Reiki energy healing. One of the ways of using Reiki is to guide meditation, and a Reiki session can become, in a sense, an assisted meditation. Getting the high vibrations of high connectedness through Reiki could be of great help when you are depressed and stressed out, even during meditation. Even if you are not stressed, Reiki could be a great path to uplift your meditations to a higher level. During a Reiki session, the healer places hands on your head and then on your heart and sends a spiritual energetic vibration to your head and heart, which brings you to a healing state of mind. As you receive Reiki, remember the vibration 
so later, when you meditate on your own, you could reproduce this vibration and induce these brain waves which allow you to connect to the spirit at will. As you shift in your meditation to another dimension, you shift through the veil to another side of the existence. There are certain signs which can help you to understand that you are moving in the right direction. As you invite communication with your favorite aspect of God, using your intention, it matters. Intend the aspect of God to come to you, and it will come. It may appear as a sound, a vibration, as silence, or frequently as a light which you will see inside your head, and not through your eyes. It is a spiritual vibration which creates a physical electric wave in the visual cortex area of your brain. DNA and neurons in your brain work as a portal from higher vibrations of the spirit to lower vibrations of the mind. As you see the light, move towards it, embrace it, and discover for yourself that you can make it stronger. It is in your power to go in the light and make it stronger. The same relates to other sensations which you might get, like the warmness in your heart, a healing light in your heart, a healing light in your heart. It is in your power to move towards them and amplify them. As you feel them and you feel they're good, embrace them and make them stronger, moving in that direction. In a good meditation, your soul becomes disconnected from your body. As you shift into a higher dimension, you lose the control over your body. This often feels as numbness. You may feel that you cannot move your hands and legs. Welcome this state because it is a sign of a good meditation. Usually you would still be in control of your breathing. Enjoy breathing deeply and slowly in a comfortable manner. And just welcome the numbness and heaviness in the rest of your body. When you come back, don't worry if the control of your body is coming back too slow. Give your soul some time to reconnect to the body and take control of the body. It may take 15 minutes to come back and it is healthier to come back slowly. Begin to move your fingers and toes and give yourself time to reconnect. As you become reconnected, it happens automatically and subconsciously. You might feel an urge to wake up and move. If you do, move slowly and don't rush. As you often have leftovers after waking from a sleeping dream, coming back to physical life after a deep meditation usually takes a little bit of time and practice. In these moments, before fully coming back, you can use the time to ask questions and get answers. Prepare your questions for the Spirit in advance, and this time of coming back is a wonderful time when you're partly still connected to the Spirit and are partly in control of your mind. You can ask questions and get some intuitive answers. Expect to feel the answers and have a good feeling on what Spirit is recommending to you. There are many good visualizations which help you to get in a meditative state. Many guided meditations can give you these visualizations. I would recommend to visualize as you breathe the air in, that you are breathing in the healing energy of the universe. And as you breathe out, pump it into your heart and visualize a ball of glowing energy in your heart, a golden flame in your heart. And this is about it. There's not much more to it. It is going to the point where you are quiet and still, when you are disconnected from your worries and your body and trust that spirit will come, and your focus of attention will shift to the area of higher vibrations where it can dwell in the spirit. Release your worries there and bring back the answers, the healings and the spiritual upgrades. There is not much instruction what to do when you are in the spirit, since words fail to describe the spirit world. The instructions can only help you to achieve the meditation state, and beyond that, you can trust your spirit guides to guide you. Remember, you are visiting this place in your sleep anyway. So the meditation is only different in that you add your intention to it. Clearing your mind and disconnecting. Many people have a hard time disconnecting from their thoughts and quieting down worries. Realize it is only for the time of meditation that you have to quiet them down. In meditation, if the worry or thought becomes excited in your mind, don't push it away. Be kind to it. Just talk to it and ask it to wait until you get out of meditation. Basically put it on the side burner. Put it on the shelf and say to it that you'll think about it later so you don't have to think about it during the meditation. You can delay the thought and clean your mind. 
among many visualizations for clearing up your mind. Take the one which is good for you at the moment. You can visualize washing dishes or washing windows. I recommend visualizing a windshield wiper, which swings in front of your vision and removes all the thoughts, all the images, and concerns which pop up in your mind. Just wipe them out and have your mind clear and empty. It takes a lot of integration and purification work to be able to disconnect from the physical reality and shift into the stillness. In your physical body, there are several points where you can put your focus of attention for the meditation. One of them is your heart. You can focus the mind on your heart and intend it to stay there. As you notice your attention to wander away, bring it back to the heart and intend it to remain there focused on love and peace. Another good focusing point is in the middle of the forehead called the third eye. You can focus your presence and attention on this spot on your forehead. Third place which you can use to focus is pineal gland, located in the center of your brain, just a bit above your ears. It doesn't matter that much where you focus your attention. What matters is that your mind gets to the point of stillness and balance, so it can stop thinking. If your meditation works well, then after the meditation, you should get more energy and more health. And amazingly, the world will be better and friendlier to you. Your problems will gradually resolve to your favor. Meditation is a miracle work, and the main miracle is that while you quiet your mind, there is something done in the background without your conscious intervention. Something is done subconsciously to help your physical life and help you with your problems. As you come out of meditation, repeat your prayers and thank your spiritual helpers for their help. If some of your meditations are not as deep as others, don't worry, because the depth of meditation depends on many factors, and one of them is planetary alignments. As you meditate, you may notice that meditations come out very different depending on the moon phase. Take it easy. There is a natural cycle which cannot change, but we can surf the waves created by the planets. New moon favors new beginnings. Waxing moon favors growth. Full moon favors transformation. Waning moon favors harvesting and completion. Sometimes meditating is easy, and sometimes meditating is almost impossible, and you remain awake during the whole meditation. Don't shift to the other side and don't feel the numbness. All the attributes might be wrong, yet it does still help to meditate even if you don't go fully to the other side. Even partial meditations still have lots of benefits for your health your spirit, and your practical life. In addition to typical meditations which require to be still and involve full disconnection from reality, there are meditations on the move that happen without all above attributes. These are useful when you are active, cannot find a quiet place to lay down or sit in a comfortable position. Sometimes a good meditation might take a second. Good meditators are meditating non-stop while continuing their daily routines. Ideally, we should be in non-stop meditation, a hundred percent of our time, connected to spirit, and not losing the balance. Consider dolphins. Dolphins are unique in a way that they are always awake, and they are always asleep. Their brain is divided into two halves. Each one is awake while another is asleep, and these two halves take turns. Thus, a dolphin is always conscious and always connected to the other side. Dolphin is an ideal, perpetual, continuous meditator. In your meditations and awake life, strive to achieve this balance. Strive to be always conscious in physicality and on the other side. This idea is very similar to the idea of lucid dream. Except lucid dream is about dreaming. But here, this idea is expanded to awake life as well. Let's call it lucid awareness. Be always aware, either in physical or in dream. Although this continuous meditation can be achieved only by special ultra-pure, ultra-advanced spiritual people, if it doesn't come easy, consider an alternative path. Instead of striving to constantly being aware, strive to frequently alternate the meditation state and the awakening state. Strive to be like a pendulum. Shift to and be in a meditative state, and then shift out and be in physicality. This serves your practical need and also it serves the spirit. 
In physicality, you can go in any vibration you like. You can be earthly, practical, and grounded. This always helps you to connect the majority of people which are tuned to the physical side of the world. So shifting down helps you to connect with other people on their level of understanding. And then you go back to a higher level. And there, upload all your experience to spirit and receive back the answers and the healing. Going back and forth is natural. You could do it at any time and get results. It takes practice and commitment, and it also takes connecting to spiritual teachers and helpers with meditation. Connecting to spiritual teachers and helpers with meditation. Being in the presence of a teacher and a group of meditators helps very much to rise to a higher level. Even most experienced of the meditators still learn more when they connect to other people. Unexpectedly, you often will find that everyone can be your teacher. Even from people of lower developments can help you in your meditations and help you raise in a new level. Looking inside. Since the main work of meditation happens on the non-physical and spiritual planes, it doesn't really matter what physical actions you utilize to achieve the effect. This is why there is no single formula for meditation. Although it is very helpful to start the meditation in the standard way with the help of guides, teachers, or teaching materials. Once you learn to shift in a spiritual area and achieve spiritual results, it is possible to start doing the meditations anywhere, and not necessarily in a quiet, protected place, nor in any special position, but anywhere, at any time, during any activity. For some people, it might be even easier to do meditation during repetitive activities, rather than in complete stillness. Keep in mind, however, that it is really helpful to be in a protected environment and in a sitting or lying position to fully shift out the body to avoid falling and getting physically hurt. Also, if you are a beginner, you might get spiritually hurt by negative influence, traumas, or negatively in the environment. So it's better to begin in a protected environment when you are sure that there are no disturbances. It's important to turn off the phone and once you finish the meditation, you are not fully protected. If you are not fully protected, don't open your emails and text messages until you really get back to physical reality and are protected again. Many people, when they start to meditate, have trouble facing themselves and become restless and distracted. It often happens that if you have a lot of hidden trauma, anger, and pain, meditation can bring these to the surface. Many beginners, when they face themselves and look inside, they find pain, and for a modern human, it is painful to look inside. It takes some conscious purification and integration work during the meditations and in conscious awakening time to face these pains. To discover the pains and hidden traumas, resolve and to disconnect from them. One common practice that helped to resolve past traumas is the understanding that the past is in the past. And it doesn't help you to hold on to past trauma. It slows you down and blocks the energy flows and hurts your health. So the secret is to separate the lesson from the trauma, the pain, and the trauma itself. Many practices include the Buddhist practices of meditation, psychoanalysis, and past life regressions. You look at the past trauma, understand what happened, separate the lesson from the trauma, keep the memory of the experience, forgive yourself and others involved in the trauma, and release the pain. You know that you have resolved the trauma when you have healed the pain and can think about and remember the past experience clearly without feeling the pain as before. Instead, you feel forgiveness, compassion, and love for yourself. You don't feel ashamed anymore and can separate your current state from the past. You'll shift to the new form of yourself and realize that the past experience is in the past and it is separate from you now you understand that all experiences are stored in Akashic records and become the possession of the universe. All experiences and lessons belong to the universal consciousness, and all experiences are equally valid. You can let go of the pain, heal the trauma, and move on. You can heal many of your past traumas by yourself, but it often helps to also get help from a friend, a teacher, and a healer so it is very helpful to connect to other healers and become a healer yourself. 
Finding friends of high spiritual vibration is a really good help in spiritual growth.